Hi, my name is Jason Copeland. I'm Vice President of Product for Platform for WebEx. WebEx is central to the way organizations collaborate today with meetings, messaging, and voice all in a central application. As people get used to collaboration, they want to use third-party applications. We're thrilled today to announce embedded apps in WebEx. Embedded apps enable users to use the applications that they already use and love right within WebEx meetings. Embedded apps also enable customers to customize their experiences to support their unique workflows. Embedded apps give developers great visibility right within WebEx and provide another low friction way to integrate into the WebEx platform. Embedded apps is available right in the WebEx app and is available within the app gallery. I'd now like to share videos from four of our early app partners. HackerRank is a developer skills app that helps businesses attract, evaluate, and hire top technical talent. Thrive Reset is an in-meeting app that helps users de-stress and reduces meeting fatigue. Workboard is an app that aligns and drives objectives and key results across organizations. Read provides real-time insights into sentiment for meeting participants to enable better collaboration within meetings. HackerRank partnered early with the WebEx team to embed our interview product within their meetings and spaces. Developers can now spin up fully collaborative coding interviews from anywhere in the world, right inside of their WebEx meeting. Skip the screen sharing and thousands of tabs. Instead, highlight code, brainstorm on whiteboards, and troubleshoot technical diagrams all within HackerRank and WebEx. With the world going remote, our customers rely on HackerRank to raise their hiring bar. Thrive Global and Cisco are both organizations that go beyond technology to put people first. We've been partnering with WebEx to bring Thrive Reset directly into WebEx meetings. Thrive Reset is based on research showing that it takes just 60 to 90 seconds to course correct from stress. You can take 60 second breaks between meetings and even during meetings to recharge and prevent stress from building up. You can download preloaded resets on topics like breathing, gratitude, stretching, and reframing problems. With Thrive Reset, we're bringing these essential human qualities to the front lines of work at precisely the moment when they are most needed. We partnered with WebEx to embed Workboard within WebEx meetings and spaces. Now, customers, including Cisco itself, can bring their strategy into focus for teams across the organization. Our new bot provides a Monday morning message to calibrate on the few things that will have the most impact and a Friday message to celebrate the micro victories. Workboard puts objectives and progress toward them on meeting agendas. Now that comes fully into WebEx meetings. So teams have the most important discussions and everyone has the same understanding as they leave the meeting. It's less effort, higher impact for teams and it's higher velocity on bold strategies for the organization. Read Dashboard is a real-time collaborative meeting dashboard that measures engagement and sentiment for meeting attendees. Think of it like a car dashboard for meetings. Read Dashboard simplifies the ability to read the room. I notice the overall score of the call is dropping significantly. I see audience segment is neutral, but engagement is negative. I'm losing the attention of the audience. I look at the talk time and I'm dominating the conversation. I stop at the end of my sentence and I ask, are there any questions? With a simple question, the meeting goes from bad to good. WebEx has delivered best-in-class tools, robust documentation, and a rockstar team to help make Read Dashboard a reality as an embedded app in WebEx meetings. Learn more about Read Dashboard on the WebEx App Hub. And now I'd like to introduce Devinder from our product team is going to give you an in-depth demo of embedded apps. Thanks, Jason. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to showcase you how we can use these embedded apps into our day-to-day -day life. So my focus on this demo would be to show you 
how we are using Miro. And again, for you who don't know what Miro is, Miro is basically an online whiteboard tool. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select apps. And from the apps, I'm going to select Miro. Um, and as you can see here, there will be a bunch of apps which are available. And I select Miro. And from here, I'm going to ask for signing. Again, signing is going to happen for the very first time. And as you can also notice that we support single sign-on. From here, I selecting the board on which Adam and I are going to collaborate. Now, as the board is coming up, so what's going to happen is, you know, once we have the board here, uh, I can add that board into the space so that all of the space participants will be able to collaborate on this board. Okay. So as you see here, uh, the board board came up, and then uh, I I can I can add that board. Now. In the real world, what will happen is as we are collaborating, we will have a need where we will have to come to a live meeting so that we can actually you know, discuss, brainstorm, and from there uh, we, can, you know, uh, we can take that board to the next level. So to do that, it's really simple. We have this board. I'm going to do is I'm going to take that board into a meeting. So what I'm doing here is I am now Starting a meeting between Adam and I, simple. I click on the meet button, and that's going to you know, start the meeting between Adam and I, and I'm going to bring in this board into the meeting. As you notice here, Adam and I were in the, in the meeting, and from here, you would see on the right pane, on the right bottom right tray, there's an apps op option. I select the apps, and now all the apps which are available in the app tray will show up here, and from that, I select Miro. Okay, same app what you what we were working on in the in, in the in space, same flow, and from here what again right now what I'm doing here is, I am, just setting it up, not really sharing in the actual meeting. From once I set it up, I'm going to click on open together, and open together essentially allows, any of the apps to come live into the meeting. So I select open together, and now I'm going to ask Adam to really showcase the flow from the receiver point of view, that how as a receiver, when, when I select open together, the, the app shows up for the receiver. Over to you, Adam. So when the vendor selected open together option, for me, as a participant in the meeting, you can see that the Miro board opened automatically without me having to do anything. It defaults to this side panel view, but if I want to get a closer look, I can pop out the app and start collaborating on Miro. I can do this by going to this icon in the top right. Let's make this even bigger. And now I can zoom in and take a look at this board that the vendor has shared with me. I can even move things around on the board without ever having to log in and the vendor and I can collaborate together. If I don't want to collaborate, I can close out the application window. If I want to bring it back later, I can go into the panels and open it back up. That's how easy it is for participants. Back to you, Devinder. So from here, what I'm going to do is we are done collaborating on Miro. So I'm going to stop the session. And what that will do is it's essentially going to stop this Miro app for all the meeting participants. Okay. So as I click on that, uh, you would see I will get a prompt which will say that it's going to stop the session for all the meeting participants. Do you want to proceed? I said yes. And now we have, we have stopped the session for all the meeting participants. So essentially what I showcased you just now is how you can bring in apps. Again, we give you an example of Miro app, but really uh, the framework is so powerful that you can think about your own use case, what you think will be relevant for either in meeting or in space or both and leverage this framework to bring in these apps into WebEx. Now, what I'm going to ask right now is to Adam to really showcase you how you, as a developer, can use this framework to build your own apps. Adam, over to you. Thanks, Devinder. I'm excited to share with you the developer journey for taking your web app and turning it into an embedded app on WebEx. Let me start by sharing my screen. 
In this small sample web app, we have a collaborative to-do list, which allows you to collaborate with colleagues on a to-do list in real time. We can add items and mark them complete. Let's do investigate WebEx embedded apps. This app is great, but when you're trying to use it during a WebEx meeting, you have to send the link out to everyone in the meeting, make sure they've opened it in the browser, and then when they're finally on the app, you have to switch back and forth between the browser and the meeting. This is where the power of the embedded apps comes in. Let me start by showing you our wonderful developer documentation on our developer portal at developer.webex.com. Once you're on the developer portal, you will go to the documentation page to learn about embedded apps. You'll see on the left side of the page a link for embedded apps. So let's go there. From here, you can learn all about the WebEx embedded app framework. We have an overview section here. The overview gives you a better understanding of the embedded apps framework and what is possible. Using our table of contents on the right, let's check out the embedded app flow section. These screens show you the user flow and experience of using an embedded app in WebEx. There's even a developer quick start that shows you how to build the web app from scratch to utilize the embedded app framework. Since we already have a web application we are embedding, we'll skip over the developer quick start for now and take a look at the API reference to see where it's available. That is located underneath the SDK section on the left. The API reference is the deeper technical documentation that shows you what all methods and events are available for the embedded apps developers. You will start by loading the embedded app SDK into your web app. This adds a global WebEx object that your app can interact with. We have the application context object that exposes methods for getting information about users, meetings, and spaces. There are even events that WebEx sends to the developer, which you can use to react to changes in WebEx in real time. The events are generated by the framework in response to modifications to application state, meeting or space details, or user roles. The first step in creating your WebEx embedded app is to create the app's manifest details on the developer portal. You can do that by navigating to the My WebEx App section located under your user profile in the top right. On this screen, since we don't have any existing apps, we are presented with a view for the different types of apps available. We are going to select Create Embedded App. The first thing we want to decide is where our app works. You have two options for where your app can live in WebEx, inside of a WebEx meeting and within WebEx spaces for messaging. Since we want our app to live in both WebEx meetings and messages, we will select both. The next thing you want to do is fill in your app's name. This is what will be displayed on the app's listing picker. So we're going to type in here, my to-do list app. You can then give a description of your app and the description is a user facing and what will be displayed in the app hub listing for your app. This field supports markdown and you can add things like bullets and links. You also need a tagline, which is a catchy one-liner for your app that shows up in the search results and the app detail page. You can then choose the icon for your app. This can be uploaded here or you can choose one of our default icons. We'll use a default icon for now. You then need to say what domains your app is allowed to load. This is an extra security measure provided by WebEx to ensure that your app only runs on the domains that you specifically allowed. So let's add our domain. The start page URL is the app initiator's WebEx client will browse to when a WebEx user first selects your app from the picker. So let's fill that in. You can even have your app load differently based on where it is run. You can specify these in the end meeting start page URL and space start page URL fields. But since our app has the same experience, we'll leave these blank. When all that is ready, we will create our app by clicking add embedded app. And our app is created. This page gives us details about our newly created app 
there is a button with the option to submit to WebEx App Hub. This is where you can submit your app to be available globally on the WebEx ecosystem. There's a bit more details that our App Hub team needs about your app to do their approval process. Once you fill out those details, our App Hub team will review your app and get it listed in the App Hub for all of WebEx. Our app is now ready to be embedded in WebEx. In our example app, we've already added the SDK and prepared it. So let's test our newly created embedded app in a meeting. I'll first start a meeting in my personal room, which is tied to my developer account, and we're ready to test it out. While we're in our meeting, we can now go to the app section, and you will see the newly created app in the listing. Let's select it. While you're in development mode of your app, it will prompt you if you would like to share personal information to the app. Organization admins can control if an embedded app can get personal information or not. This information includes the user's email and detailed information about the meeting. If I were to not allow it, the embedded app would not get those details. I'm going to go ahead and allow sharing. So now your app is ready to start developing. I'm going to create another to-do list app, but this time I'm going to share it with my WebEx meeting. My app is using the SDK and calling the set share API. When I do, you see that the open together button appears. This is where your app user will tell WebEx to open your app with all participants of the meeting or space, as you saw in the demo with the vendor earlier. That is all it takes to bring your app to life in WebEx. We're excited to see what you're going to build. Back to you, Jason. Thanks, Adam. The momentum in our developer ecosystem is building quickly. Today, we have 23 applications available within our app gallery in WebEx meetings. In the coming months, we'll have dozens more applications. We think you're going to love embedded apps. For end users, they provide a rich, integrated collaboration experience with apps that are better together. For developers, embedded apps are easy to develop and highly visible to end customers. We can't wait to see all the innovative embedded apps that our ecosystem is going to create. We encourage our developer partners to visit developer.webex.com for more information. Also, you can scan this QR code for resources that will help you get started. And of course, feel free to reach out to us directly.